Henry, the two areas of existence that have plagued me my entire life has been explaining the cosmos and explaining consciousness. Now, some philosophers, even scientists, would seek to somehow blend the two in some way, whereas most would say that that's wishful thinking and silly. You've come at uh, a study of consciousness from the standpoint of quantum mechanics and have spent your career understanding the importance of quantum mechanics and explaining the physical world. Does it make sense to invoke quantum mechanics in understanding both cosmology, the universe, and consciousness, the mind, and, and, and can the two have, have a relationship together? Uh, quantum mechanics, <clears throat> as it has been uh, empirically verified, <clears throat> is really at the level of kind of human interaction with the universe. I mean, we do experiments and we test quantum mechanics and uh, confirm that the predictions are correct. <clears throat> and uh, that only involves personal mind, it seems. In other words, our personal minds, we make choices of what we want to do, and we do actions, and then we see the results of these actions. So it is very much at a personal human level. Mm -hmm. Mind is coming in, but as personal mind. It's, it's not a cosmic consciousness, if you want to put it that way. And, and it's limited in its scope. To it's limited particular. in its scope. It does, you know, in this particular brain, uh, some particular collapse is occurring as a consequence of something or other. And so it's, you don't see any global consciousness necessarily come in. On the other hand, <clears throat> the, uh, the way it works does suggest that um, there's a bigger reality involved here because the way quantum mechanics works is that a choice is made over here to do some experiment, some result appears. And this, if, if the experiment that you've done involve, for example, two particles that originate in a common source and they move to these two different regions, then the, um, the result that you get there, the choice that, the experiment that you made there, in fact, has a certain instant impact upon uh, the p potentialities and possibilities over here. So there's... Without any communication. Without any communication, except via the past in some sense, which seems right. to be already fixed. Right. So, <laughs> uh, so there does seem to be an, uh, a need for some overarching process here that's connecting things that are happening in various parts of the universe. When the, uni when the wave function collapses, even though in some sense the collapse is associated with this region, it has consequences far away. And uh, so there is the... And they're the, instantaneous. Uh, instantaneous, See. instantaneous, and fast and light. And uh, so this is a, a topic that since Einstein, Podolsky, and Rosen wrote their famous paper has been um, discussed. I mean, thousands of papers, I'm sure, are discussing this very strange effect, uh, a seeming instantaneous action at a distance. And, uh, now, so that does suggest that, that you need to talk about something that's very non-classical and to achieve this uh, interconnection over vast, potentially vast distances. And, and it's beyond what you said initially, which is that, as we understand the quantum mechanics, is, is one individual yeah, that's right. mind making that's right. a, an observation, a choice, a, asking a question in a particularly localized... That's, that's exactly the point I'm making, that, that what I talked about before was at a personal level and seemed localized. And, uh, <clears throat> and uh, on the other hand, there is this mysterious uh, aspect of quantum mechanics that uh, somehow the choices made here can instantaneously have some effect far away. And uh, uh, so this at least moves you one step beyond just personal consciousness into something uh, at least that's spanning and it's associated with conscious. You make a conscious experience here, and then the experiences that you're going to witness over here are somehow influenced. But it's not a purely mechanical thing, because you, you really yes. are making a, a real choice here. A real choice is made. And so it could go either way. It could go either way. Yes or no? That's right. And it goes one way or the other, and somehow there is an effect instantaneously 
far away. So this cannot be explained in a purely mechanical. I mean, this EPR effect, uh, sometimes called, is, uh, is definitely not explainable in terms of classical concepts. And uh, so it's something that, it's another dimension of reality that is not explained, uh, either, cl either classically or even at the lowest level of quantum mechanics, which is personal. Localized. Localized personal experience. So there's a mystery there, at least, that, that, that has to be looked at. And uh, now, even in classical mechanics, there is another mystery, which is how did the laws get to be what they are? How did the initial conditions get to be what they were? What's, what started the thing off? And, uh, that's a mystery no matter what you do. <laughs> that's a mystery. On the other hand, um, the mechanical explanation, as you probably know, there's this idea of the, um, <clears throat> the um, string theory. And uh, it seemed that string theory, first off, gave one mathematical right. solution. There's only one solution in the universe. That, so you don't need initial conditions. Everything is supposed to be fixed by just mathematical necessity, which would have been an answer to this question. You don't need any spirit or uh, grand consciousness or cosmic consciousness or anything. Just a mathematical requirement fixed everything. Uh, however, then it later turned out that, well, it was known that this single solution applied in 11-dimensional space. So they had to do something which they call compactify. You take right, most right, of the dimensions, right. roll up in little balls, so you're only left right. with kind of four. Right. <clears throat> well, it turns out, according to estimates, that there's something like 10 to the 500th power different ways of rolling it up into little balls. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, so you have not one solution, you have 10 to the 500th different yeah. solutions. So. Uh, so one solution of the thing, well, you only have some finite number, it might be huge, but maybe just every universe is, is created and uh, it exists and we just happen to be in one that you, you talked about the anthropic principle, the anthropic principle being the fact that all of the, or many of the constants of the universe seem to be just exactly uh, adjusted so that human life could exist. But of course, if all of these billions and billions and billions of universes exist, then um, it's, um, then we can just say, well, we're in the one that happens to have the right values of the constants. But, but the question would be, in that universe, whichever one that we're in, why do these quantum mechanical things work at these vast distances with no time for communication? Was, what is it about this universe that we're in that will allow quantum mechanical communication instantaneous across vast distances. What possibly could make that work? Well, you know, I think the answer is that it can't be a physical process. It can't be anything that's understood classically. And since, my, since personal mind is brought in by quantum mechanics, at least you're one step towards saying, well, in order to understand this other mystery, there may be something that's akin to mind that is doing this job of creating the initial conditions. And uh, I mean, I've just given you the, the mechanical explanation. There's 10 to the 500 possibilities, and uh, we just happen to be in the one that has the right, that permits life to exist. But the other possibility is that, uh, that there's a part of nature that we have yet to understand. You see, physical processes cannot, do not, as we normally understand, cannot determine what the laws are. Physical processes obey the laws. Mm -hmm. They don't create the laws. Right, right. And they don't create the initial conditions. They evolve the initial conditions. So you need something that's somehow akin to what we already found in quantum mechanics, namely another process was needed. That process we need in quantum mechanics was only personal. 
For the localized quantum localized, mechanics. Localized, yeah, it was localized. But the, uh, at least you're saying, well, if, if you can get, go that far, you know, maybe there is a, a bigger mind of which... Uh, so, I'm not saying that this is the only solution, but at least it becomes more plausible once you've gone to quantum mechanics and say that personal minds are coming in, that maybe there's a, a bigger mind.